Thank you very much, Jason. Uh, okay, uh, we're going to move on, and now uh, I'm delighted to welcome uh, Kate Cook to the stage. Who Kate is an author and a public speaker and a founder of the Nutrition Coach. Um, so she is uh, one of the UK's premier authorities on personal transformation, and uh, she works with some of the UK's biggest organisations: Accenture, McKinsey. JP Morgan, EDF Energy, and Selfridges, to name but a few. So please welcome Kate Cook. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, uh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, my name is Kate Cook, and um, I am uh, coming here today with three hats on. So my first hat is a clinical hat. I am a clinician. I'm still a clinician, so I'm a nutritional therapist, and nutritional therapists are into something called functional medicine. And functional medicine is a kind of fancy footwork approach to nutrition that is much more kind of much uh, is away from the sort of obviousness of nutrition, which is kind of eat more carrots kind of thing, which we all think we know about, and into a much deeper area where we um, we look at testing people, for example, to try and get to the bottom of a health problem. So we're using testing like cortisol testing, which is a very very exciting field. So I keep that clinical hat on because it connects me with real people. So it can, it's not just the theory of nutrition. I mean, sometimes it's, um, you know, we're, we're, um, when, when, when food is developed, if you like, it's the people decide what might be the best um, kind of health categories, for example, to focus on. But actually, how does that translate really into human health? So, you know, obviously there are nutritionists who analyze the, the vitamin C in an orange in a fact, you know, for, for factory or for manufacturing processes. We are really uh, cutting edge of dealing with people. So I come with a clinical hat on. I come with another hat on, which is uh, I'm a food consultant. So we, uh, I've worked for one of the major high street um, sandwich chains uh, and we help them to um, to be creative in how they um, decide to give information to their public. They're not a health food shop. They are somebody who's very, they're very cutting edge in my view. They've been great people to work with. We worked with them for six years, we still do. Um, and we, we teach them to be creative about nutrition and the message that they give. So it's about giving information to people and um, so that they've got the choice to take that information and be different. And uh, my third hat is as a trainer and an educator, basically, and doing that in such a way that you're not preaching to people. I mean, there's talk about the sort of nanny state, but uh, that we're not preaching to people. We're actually informing them and to make those choices. Um, I think... Um, I think the thing is that with nutrition, as I say, it's all around us. You know, we're, we're surrounded by nutrition, so we think we know what we're talking about, but actually, we kind of don't. You know, so so um, often an HR person will ring me up and say, "Listen, um, you know, Kate, come and do a, a day with us. Come and do um, a, 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 a course with us." I did actually a course for for TFL uh, many years ago, five years ago. We did a we did we, we did a trial with uh, TFL, but often um, people will ring up and say, "Do you know what?" I think I know it. You know, usually the girls actually in the department, they ring up and say, listen, we're doing this for our people, but do you know what? Don't bother about us because we're loads of girls and we go to the gym every day anyway and we know what we're talking about. So don't worry about us. We're covered. So I then say, okay, so what did you have for breakfast? And when they tell me, I know they don't have a clue. Okay. They don't have a clue. Um, so um, if anybody's had cereal this morning for breakfast or toast or orange juice, you don't have a clue either. <laughs> so, um, you know, and I think we get this very, very mixed message in that, you know, surrounding that nutrition that surrounds us the whole time. You know, that um, idea that, um, you know, that we kind of know it all. We're getting these messages from um, several sources. We're getting it from the TV. So um, what we're looking at is people say... Uh, oh, healthy eating, we know what that looks like. Do you know what I mean? We know what healthy eating looks like. So it's obviously more veg, uh, loads more um, carrots probably comes into it. Um, probably not so much of the crisps, et cetera, et cetera. But actually, so few people know what the rules are. So it's like sort of almost people come in with the solution. You know, you come in with the solution of, you know, in canteen work, et cetera, et cetera, without knowing the structure of why you're doing it. You know, it'd be like sort of, I was saying to somebody earlier, it'd be like sort of saying to people, you know what, um, there's a bunker here. Everybody load into the bunker um, without telling them that there's a possibility of nuclear war. I mean, why would you do that? So people come to a canteen, they, they, um, they're offered an offering which includes healthy eating, 
Um, but it sounds a little bit like, you know what, healthy eating is kind of boring. Why would I do that? Uh, I might as well just go for the chips option, you know. I'm sure there are obviously a lot of people who do choose the healthy option. But people really want to. You know, we're, we're, we're like children released into this place uh, which says, you know what, we can do anything we want. You know, suddenly, my mum's not telling me what to do. So actually, if I want to choose the chips, I can. It's brilliant. You know, I'm let off the hook and nobody's going to see me. My wife's not here or whatever, and I could just choose what I like. But, but why you do that is because you just don't know the structure. If you knew the structure, then you do it. Um, for example, for me, it's like um, looking at a ga game of cricket. You know, I mean, sure, loads of people know how to play cricket, but I just honestly don't. Uh, it just, I know there's sort of blokes in white kind of things, and they've got a bat. Uh, but you know what? I just don't know the rules of that game. And so many people do not know the rules of nutrition because they're getting the messages from the government, which is the five-a-day campaign. Well, everybody knows um, if you're an Australian... Anybody Australian here? Anybody Australian? Uh, it's nine a day in Australia, um, so obviously that's a load of rubbish. Uh, so, um, but anyway, you know, what does that five a day actually mean? Does anybody know what that actually means in reality? So you get people hijacking that, like famously recently the Haribos, um, did anybody see that? The Haribos, how many Haribos would it take to make up your five a day? <laughs> actually, I can't remember how many it was, but it was an awful lot, as you can imagine. But of course, that sort of um, doesn't really take into the amount of sugar that's in the Haribo or anything else. So you get also people, um, something like also, understandably, looking at things like smoothies. You know, who thinks who, smoothies is a health option? Anybody think it's a health option? Yeah? Okay, quite a few of you. Uh, but does anybody know how many teaspoons of sugar in a um, fruit smoothie? It's about nine, nine teaspoons of sugar in a fruit smoothie. So, so what we're saying is that what somebody's done is got a, got a smoothie and processed it because if you were a monkey in the jungle, you wouldn't have the option to, to process that drink. So, you know, it's turned into a sugar drink. Yes, it's got vitamins and minerals in it. So what I'm saying is that actually it's about knowing that game, knowing the foundation of that game, not about nanny state saying, you know, listen, all pile into the bunker uh, because obviously, you know, why would you do that? Um, it's about knowing why you're making that choices. What, what those choices? Why wouldn't you choose to be dynamic? Why wouldn't you choose to be alive? Why wouldn't you choose that as your foundation? Um, so um, a lot of what we do is teaching people that foundation and then making the healthy choices. And that's the important thing here. So um, if we're going to squeeze people's time, um, it's sort of up to us, really, to, to be able to say to people that if we're going to squeeze your time, we have a, do we have a responsibility um, to, to showing those people um, what that's about? Um, so basically, um, I think that it is our responsibility to show people. And it's all about this sort of, as they say, liberation through, through knowledge, that, that once you're liberated in that knowledge then you can um, start to make healthier choices. For, for us, and our more fancy footwork part of what we do as, as nutritional therapists, and looking at that cortisol, you know, we're not just making this up as something that's a quite a nice little thing, you know, that we should um, take care of our people a little bit more, um, that sort of wellness, that fluffiness. It's actually about a real change to biochemical function. So looking when we test people's cortisol level, that's their stress hormone. We can see the difference, obviously, that makes on a cup of, you know, for example, in espresso. We, um, I, we were seeing this morning that sort of cutting edge um, workplace with a, an espresso bar, you know. Uh, and that's your sort of crashing energy place, you know. That's where you super fuel yourself and then you have an enormous crash. So um, whilst that might be nice and what the kids want, actually it's not what serves you as people who are making choices in the workplace. So, um, so we, can make, we can measure that. It's, it's not something that is a nicety, if you know what I mean. However, having said that, I think we're really badly served in the UK about this wellness message. I really think we are very poorly served. Um, and if you look up wellness, for example, you'll see that almost all of those companies um, who are into wellness are American. And in fact, if you look up wellness speaker, which I know you will now because I'm the top of, uh, I'm the top of that for wellness speaker, um, you will see that um, actually uh, all the rest of the people are Americans. So nobody uh, is, is uh, set themselves up, if you like, as a wellness 
um, speaker, which I find extraordinary. I mean, it's pretty good for my business, but uh, I do find it extraordinary that nobody else has done that. So, so what do we do about it? I think that what we do about it is um, we, we, we teach people the game. We teach people the game and we teach them how to play it. And what we see in companies, you know, again, um, people were talking about uh, revolutionary change and organic change. Um, and I'm for this much more organic change. Uh, otherwise, it is nanny state. So we make very, very small changes uh, to people's um, energy, if you like, by changing what they eat. And what you see is a dynamic change in about two days. Okay, in two days, you see an absolute dynamic change in people's, industry, in people's, um, people's energy, which picks up absolutely enormously. Um, and it's very, very simple to do. It's very simple to show people the way without being a nanny, without um, you know, herding them into that bunker without any particular reason for doing it. So I find it enormously um, uh, you know, rewarding that, that something so simple can be so dynamic. So I say to people, you know, nutrition, in effect, is a four-letter word. Uh, and does anybody have an idea what that four-letter word might be? Uh, it's time. <laughs> uh, and so therefore, you know, again, you know, we can, we can show people, um, you know, and, and show them, if you like, the end of it, which is, you know, um, about recipes and about how to do things. But in the, in the end, we've got to give them back that community <laughs> and that time and a way that they're actually going to um, be able to do the nutrition, do the food, do all the things that lead them to a healthier life. So, you know, eating as a community, being a community, um, um, learning how to eat as a, as a community, which we've lost touch with in Britain. And if you were an Italian, you would know that uh, food, you know, in, in, I lived in Milan for a number of years, uh, and in Milan, I don't know if it's still true because I was there for about 15 years ago, but, you know, they all knock off for a massive lunch. They, they all shut up the shops and then they go and go back to their mums and have lunch. You know, of course, that's not very practical for us in Britain, but I would like to get back to that idea that we do take time and we take... Uh, uh, and if we're going to steal that from people in the way we are, are, are working people, especially in this recessionary climate that we, uh, we give them back something and that we give them back that choice. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, I would say that, that if we were going to change something, it would be, if you like, that gift of time back to people and being able to show them how they can revolutionise their life just by making simple, organic changes that, that can change their, their life. So, thank you very much.